Hi, and welcome to Filmmaker's Compass Podcast, a show where we talk about movies and, well, more movies. I'm D-Man, joined by CP, and I hope everybody's having a great holiday season this year. Uh, If you guys can't tell because you're listening or you're just not paying attention, CP, did you notice my background? I did. It doesn't look like your old background. (laughs) I'm not in South Carolina. I have actually officially moved. So I'm in a new townhouse, a uh, same city, West Covina, two bedroom, uh, decent sized square footage and very excited to be here. I, uh, I am, you know, it's bittersweet leaving my old place and our roommates, Andres and Nancy. So a big shout out to those guys. Uh, we had a great three years and survived a pandemic together. So I'll miss you guys, but uh, I am excited, you know, change, change can be exciting and can be fun. And here I am in my, uh, in my new place. So I'm not going to give everybody a video tour because I'm sure there's a bunch of people listening, uh, only listening. So right now you could just see a window, but it is new. <laughs> nice. How are you doing today? I'm good, man, dude. How I hope you had a good Christmas. I had a great Christmas and I'm very excited that it's almost New Year's. I know. I can't believe Christmas is already over, man. It always goes so fast. And this year specifically for me, just with the move and uh, being in South Carolina and all this stuff, I'm like, man, Christmas really flew by. And I already can't wait until it returns next year. Because Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You did end up getting a tree, just not I, till the 23rd? Yes, that is true. I did get a tree up <laughs> at my new place. And Here's the thing. I never thought this day would come to pass, but one of my friends, I don't want to go so far as to say he's a Grinch, but he doesn't have nearly as much holiday spirit as I do or you do. And that is Matt Hellison. And he got his Christmas tree up this year before me, which is absolutely crazy. That's something I never thought would happen. Wow. He beat me, man. Wow. (laughs) I should have come down. I should have come down to your house and just enjoyed. You always have the best decorations and just enjoyed your holiday spirit. Dude, I I just, I mean, who would have ever thought the day that Matt Helson would love Christmas more than you? I know it's true. And it's sad for me, (laughs) but on that note, like you said, I hope everybody had a great Christmas. I did to CP. So I was able to, for three straight nights, I got to go to a party with my friends and, and celebrate with family. So it was great. Dude, good stuff, man. I'm really excited to hear it. All right. Well, I want to jump into shout outs real quick before we get started. And first up on our shout outs, I just want to give a big one to Santa Claus. So great work this year. Seems like everybody got their presents delivered. I certainly uh, got everything I wanted. So here in America, he had to he had to deliver those presents when apparently there's like an Arctic storm coming across majority of the country. So probably a little cool up there in the sled and i'm glad hopefully all the reindeer made it no one no one froze hopefully so yes and on that note to my in-laws and family for hosting an amazing christmas this year thank you big shout out to you guys it's a lot of fun and everyone who sent me gifts for christmas you know this is my platform and i would like to thank you all it was great and i really appreciate it i also have to give a big shout out Uh, to my godson and his brother for helping us move. It ended up being more stuff than I thought. And I greatly appreciate the extra bodies because literally it makes a massive difference (laughs) when you're moving. Very true. Very true. Thank you guys. And then finally, I just want to give a big shout out to all of our listeners in 2022. Uh, Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Uh, You know, you guys, we try to have as much fun as we can and we're, we're just so happy that everybody Uh, gives us you know about an hour every week and tunes in so thank you so much and i know cp and i are looking forward to a uh, great 2023 so cp do you have any uh shout outs on this episode um yeah first of all we got to give a shout out to brad who said he's psyched that we're gonna check out his movie and and give him a review yes so brad thank you for for uh reaching out um, if you guys don't know who Brad is, he's actually on one of the very early episodes of the podcast. He's actually an actor from our hometown that we ended up running into um, in downtown L.A. We were both in the wrong place at the wrong time and we started chatting and <laughs> you know, we're like, how how are three Notre Dame fans 
from South Bend all in this building right now, but it worked out. They're um, sweatshirt on right now. Yeah, right. Also want to give a shout out to Ivor who made some great notes about his thoughts on the Snyderverse and the future of oh, DC and the fact fantastic. that well, the Snyderverse is too long, which he does have a very valid point. Zack Snyder makes movies way too long, but thank you, man. And I actually really wish you were on the podcast last week to, uh, you know, share your thoughts on where DC's going. Cause I know you're a fan too. Well, here's the thing. I think CP in 2023, we're finally going to do the episode around the Snyderverse, where we're actually going to take a look at how this was constructed, what the themes were, what worked and what didn't. And who knows, Ivor, if you're open to coming on the show, uh, we would love to have you know an in-depth discussion on how this all unfolded. And then now the future of DC, obviously, I think the Snyderverse is over, CP. I think it's well, over. That brings me to my last shout out, which is James Gunn and just... Do us all a favor and just resign, quit, uh, whatever. Uh, we would really appreciate it. Thanks, man. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I guess we'll have to continue that conversation because it seems like you still have very strong feelings about it. So we'll, we'll circle back around to uh, James Gunn and the DCEU in future episodes. But actually for this episode, we're kind of excited because this is our final podcast of 2022. And what we really wanted to do on this episode is take a look back a year in review and see, you know, hey, what were some of the top movies this year? Uh, what were some of the unexpected gems? What were some of the letdowns? And obviously, CP, you and I, even between us, can't see every movie that came out in 2022. Very so true. when we are doing our list, just keep in mind that these are the movies that we saw now. There is actually one of our lists is movies from 2022. I still want to see. So obviously, <laughs> right. We couldn't get to all of them. So I assume to all of our listeners, if there's any of these topics that you would like to send your list for with movies that maybe you saw and we didn't see, we would greatly appreciate that. And then probably discuss those a little bit in the shout outs next week. So, but just keep that in mind because yeah, my, my favorite movie of 2022, you know, Hey, maybe if, I had seen Avatar when I did this list. It might be number one, but I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> true. So totally yeah, true. I don't know. So keep that in mind. But we do want to have a little fun. And then at the end, we'll take a look at 2023 and what's coming up on the slate of movies and what we're looking forward to most. So CP, I'll throw it over to you. Uh, whichever topics you want to start with, um, we'll go ahead and, and kick it off. Well, let's start with trailers. Um, I mean, we're seeing great trailers now for movies that are coming out next year. So what were the trailers that came out for movies last year that just had you pumped and you were so excited to see them? Okay. I, I It's interesting because I think, right, trailers are unique. I think the, oh, here's the Star Wars reference. I think uh, the trailers for The Force Awakens and even really all of the Disney movies were actually incredible. Yeah, The movies themselves didn't necessarily live up to those trailers, but trailers can be fun in their own right. You know, I think, yeah. I, God, I think thinking back to when those dropped, I think there was a trailer for the Batman this year that dropped, or it might have dropped, I think, early this year because they had pushed the release date, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it ended up, I was really pumped for that. But, you know, uh, top trailers, I think one that was really intriguing and I was fascinated was the trailer for Nope, which kind of had a sci-fi Western vibe kind kind yeah. of a you know alien spacecrafts invading you know. A you're very you're talking the place. first trailer, right? The first one that dropped that was very ambiguous yeah. about the plot and everything. Yeah, yeah that was an awesome. It was trailer. it was a really cool trailer. It definitely. I mean, the thing that threw me was the title of the movie, Nope. I don't know how I feel about that title. That was kind of weird because I was like, that does not suggest to me anything about what this movie's about. Other than like, obviously I can imagine it's just somebody right. Seeing a spacecraft in the desert and being like, Nope, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. But that was, that was the only thing, but otherwise I thought the trailer was yeah, really well put together. It was intriguing. It definitely got me interested in, Hey, what's this movie going to be about? And that's, I think that's the goal of any trailer. That's the goal of a trailer. <laughs> 
Number two, again, for a movie that I am going to see but haven't seen yet is Avatar The Way of Water. So I enjoyed that trailer as well. Uh, as a fan, I'm, you know, I think a lot of people do kind of take exception with Avatar as it is the highest grossing movie of all time. And yet I feel like people kind of diss it for just being like Dances with Wolves or Pocahontas on another planet. And I actually really enjoyed the first one. So seeing what they were trying to do with the underwater scenes and what the trailer kind of, the thing is I'm seeing Avatar in 3D. So when I saw this trailer, it's eliciting, I'm, I'm getting my imagination's running wild with how this will look in IMAX on 3D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that trailer did for me. I was like really pumped because I was like, okay, I can imagine this is going to look stunning. And from what I've heard, Avatar is definitely an experience that should be had in a theater. So I'm going for sure. Fair enough. And number one, this is maybe a little controversial, but Thor Love and Thunder. I actually really enjoyed the, I think the first full trailer drop. And I was really excited for that movie. I loved Thor Ragnarok. The entire uh, the entire cast and the director were all coming back. It felt like we were going to yeah. get round two. And I was really pumped for that movie. I actually didn't hate it the way I think it gets trashed on online. Yeah. Well, you know, what's going on I, over the last three weeks? There's been so much hate for Taika Watiki and Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why everybody's ragging on it to that degree. I I do think it it was not as good as Thor Ragnarok or even to that end uh, many other Marvel movies. Yeah. But I also found it obviously there were a lot of laughs. I found it to be fast paced and enjoyable. It was uh, definitely one that had a few kind of great moments in it. Yeah. And obviously we're not going to bust into Thor because we're talking trailers here. But you know it it definitely had kind of a bit of a off kind of sense of humor where sometimes I think some of the jokes were ill-placed, but I thought the trailer was great. I was really excited for Gore, the God butcher Mm -hmm. and, you know, Christian Bale's performance in that regard, which I thought he lived up to. He did a great job. I mean, maybe I would have liked to have seen him butcher more gods. (laughs) That would have been nice, right? Yeah. But generally speaking, uh, that definitely was probably the movie I was looking forward to the most. So in the trailer, I thought it was great. Noted. Okay. Okay. I can dig it. Um, Throw it over to you. For me. So the first trailer that I was really excited about, and I actually didn't see it, it released that many times was the trailer for the movie, the cursed. Oh, okay. Did did you see this? I did not see the movie. Okay. So it's, it's uh, a horror film set in like the mid 1800s. Um, it's very like ambiguous as to what is haunting this village, but it, I, I saw the trailer and I was like, I'm very intrigued by this. Unfortunately, once I saw the movie, the movie was not as exciting as the trailer made it seem to be. It didn't have that level of, it didn't deliver on the, on the, on the, the creepiness and the chills and the, you know, everything that you want from a horror movie, but the trailer, I looked, I, I remember watching the trailer and thinking that looks like someone knows what they're doing. That's awesome. Yeah, I love a good trailer. Um, the second one, Number total two. genre shift, The Lost City. This is the Sandra Bullock comedy rom com okay. where she is a romance writer trapped in the jungle with uh Taddy and Chatham and Brad Pitt, and um Harry Potter plays the villain. So what draws you to that? Well, I, I mean, first of all, it was a hilarious trailer. Second of all, <laughs> As you know, I love Sandra Bullock movies and I've seen all of them. So, of course, I was going to see it. But I was like, it looks entertaining. It looks comedic. I did see the movie in the theater. It was not as funny as the trailer made it seem. But I remember watching that trailer and it had plenty of laughs in it. Nice. And then number one, um, I don't know if you saw this trailer. It's the unbearable weight of massive talent. Oh, I haven't even seen the trailer. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So the premise of this movie is Nicolas Cage <laughs> plays Nicolas Cage. He oh essentially is hired by this European billionaire 
to come to to his his mansion because he's a big Nicolas Cage fan and they're going to write a Nicolas Cage movie together and it turns out that they end up getting involved with the Italian mafia who's trying to kill oh, them wow. and the trailer is brilliant and I will tell you the movie does not disappoint and okay, um, cool. I just got to give it that out. the hat to Nicolas Cage for that one. Yeah, you know, I, I do think trailers, you can do some really kind of fun things and be a little bit out of the box. Like, I don't know, did you see the trailer for the Barbie movie that's coming out in 2023? Yes, I did. And how they kind of play on uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey with like the Barbie iconography. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was neat. Like was that was them clever. having some fun with a trailer that like I when you're making a Barbie movie, I never would have expected it to tie into 2001 a Space Odyssey. Like You know yeah. another trailer that I really loved too was the Batman's trailer. Yeah, I like that one. I mean, it again, um it was different than what we'd seen out of previous Batman movies and and the trailer kind of really established the tone of the film which I thought was super powerful because in a, as an audience, we went into it knowing that this wasn't going to be like any of the Batman movies that we've seen so far. And I mean, they put Nirvana in it and it was great. For sure. I think, honestly, I think one of my favorite trailers of all time was for Revenge of the Sith. Another Star Wars drop there. <laughs> <laughs> that trailer is amazing. And that movie was amazing. I loved it. Yeah. All right, next topic. Let's see what we got next. All right, so... What did you think were the best films of 2022? All right, cool. I'll start off number three. Uh, this is going to be a controversial controversial pick because I doubt this would make most people's list, but it is a Christmas movie, and I actually really did enjoy it. It's called Spirited with uh, Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds on Apple TV+. Plus. So this, to my knowledge, I do not believe this released in theaters. It was a streaming movie release. And I actually thought it had a few really good songs in it. I thought it was fun. Uh, parts of it were funny. And it just, I don't know, it got me in the mood for the holidays. It's kind of a, you know, a new take on like Scrooge. Okay. Okay. I, I did not see it. Um, is it worth checking out? I don't know if you would like it. And I would only add it to your list of movies to watch when the holiday season rolls back around. Uh, now, is it going to make your list of movies that you watch every year? I'll watch it again. Yeah. Okay. I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Noted. So now Will Ferrell, man, he's been in quite a few Christmas movies. He's in Spirited, Elf, Daddy's Home 2. <laughs> Daddy's Home 1. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, hey, he's been in a lot. Uh, number two, you actually just mentioned this movie. Uh, my second favorite movie of the year was The Batman. So I actually thought it was a great new take. Uh, it's You know, it does have vibes that kind of work with the nolan films but ultimately they really kind of gave batman a different direction you know obviously i think the riddler in this movie i thought it was great i thought he did an excellent job i liked mm -hmm. the riddler as the villain it does have a little bit of like joker vibes you know i kind of get that and i did think the movie had i think we talked about this before it had an opportunity to maybe be a little bit more you know with the riddles it could have done maybe a little bit more but on the flip side i really enjoyed the film I thought the action was great. I loved the portrayal of the Penguin and kind of Gotham in particular. I thought Gotham City was really the Gotham City that we envisioned from the comics. This kind of yeah, yeah. dingy, you know, grimy, crime riddled, you know, kind of a scary place. Like not a place that you would really want to visit. Because especially in The Dark Knight, which I believe was filmed in Chicago, you know, Nolan's taken that movie on Gotham felt very much honestly like a regular city you know? yeah for sure it i know in batman begins they had a what's that area like the docks or, or whatever the narrows the narrows yeah where they kind of like that's like his like that's where all that is but in the batman they, they really made gotham the city that i just always kind of envisioned it you know i love tim burton's gotham city um but it's very gothic but awesome. Nice. So okay. I love that take. And then number one, I think we've talked about this as well on this show, but my favorite movie of 2022 was Top Gun Maverick. So, I mean, 
what can you really say to complain about Top Gun Maverick? Smashed in the box office. Um, I think it has like a 99% audience approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, it just was a movie. I went to the theater and I had seen the trailer. It didn't make my uh, top trailers list. I knew the aerial cinematography was going to be great, but I was not really all that pumped for Top Gun Maverick. I was kind of like, yeah, I'm going to go see it if you know people want to go. And I ended up coming out of the theater just blown away. Like, obviously, here's another Star Wars reference. I mean, I know the final mission uh, mirrors the Death Star trench run in the original Star Wars, which, God, if you're going to copy anything, copy the best. <laughs> yeah. Right? right. Everybody was like, oh, they just like did Star Wars. I was like, yeah. And it was awesome. Like, I still love the Death Star trench run. But more than that, I think what they really did was deliver a film that if you're a fan of the original, it was absolutely outstanding. And in a lot of ways, I would argue that Top Gun Maverick might even be superior to Top Gun. Uh, the only difference is I think Top Gun has a lot of iconic moments that have lived on in pop culture. So I think that movie still kind of supersedes. But yeah, this movie, the action was incredible it was literally edge of your seat when they're on the mission you're like this is insane and it's a movie that was also totally worthy of seeing in the theaters i think it's way better on the big screen and if you ever you know get a chance if they do a re-release because they might it was so popular they i might. hope they do you know who knows uh, it, it might be a movie that you know plays they re-release -re in the theaters around like fourth july or something you know i could see it coming back because it did so well and if you get if you get a chance i would go see it in the theater but they have all the iconic music. Apparently, Tom Cruise doesn't age. And no, no, it's just it just totally it's rewards fans and then delivers an experience that was awesome. So that was my that's my favorite. OK, I mean, listen, that's a that's a great favorite. So for my list of the best films. So this is number three is actually the film Bullet Train. Oh, Brad uh, Pitt. Yeah, with Brad Pitt. Uh, it's directed by David uh, Leitch, who also did the John Wick movies. Well, the first John I Wick. absolutely was about to say, I was like, it looks like John Wick on the train. And I remember watching the trailer and thinking, there's no way this is going to be good. Going to the theater re reluctantly to watch it. And I was totally blown away. Um, there's awesome. great, you know, action sequences. It had a quirky sense of humor. And I totally enjoyed it. It was one of those movies that I walked out of thinking, wow, this is like everything that I wanted in a movie to be. I don't um, know why hmm. the movie, like it's very colorful and I don't know what it is about that. I mean, maybe it's just, you know, uh, psychology or something, but that's very pleasing to me. <laughs> like I love like the end credits scene of like Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, it just has like those neon colors and as different backgrounds. I'm like with silhouettes and even this movie, it just has like that. I don't know that feel. I'm like, I don't know why. I just love that. Yeah, and it was just uh, just a fun movie. Um, and I mean, it, I think it's kind of hard to find a Brad, a bad movie with Brad Pitt. Normally he delivers on the entertainment factor sure. and did it once again in a role different than he typically does. Cause um, he's not known for his action stunts. <laughs> I know. Huh? Yeah. Um, number two for me, I'm going to go with Sonic the Hedgehog two, which if you what? recall, there was actually an episode of this podcast where we talked about Sonic versus Sonic two. I mean, dude, uh, I love the Sonic movies. What can I say? And even better, I, I thought it was a very good sequel where they introduced more characters that I love. They went super Sonic um oh, and it was, was very so cool. in, in line with the the spirit of the first one which i thought was just a fun entertaining movie awesome and then, yeah i mean hey those movies uh, they're not gonna really win awards but they're fun they're just fun movies well i both the movies i listed i saw multiple times in the theater and the third one is the same as you you know the best movie of the year was hands down top gun maverick um i think i told you i ended up seeing it eight times it's everything that you want in a movie to be there's there's the action the adventure the the drama you know we get to see this guy maverick pull it off one more time um it's everything that you love about a movie i mean it's why we watch movies and gosh man jerry brockheimer just knows how to do it he's done it so many times 
And he does it again. And Tom Cruise again proves that he is the biggest movie star in the world for a reason. And I even loved they because the movie's coming out so much later than the original and Tom Cruise is getting up there, you know, in age, they actually were able to pull off. Will Maverick live or die? But yeah. as far as stakes go, they had enough there that we I mean, I oh, yeah. thought he might die. Oh, no, absolutely. You're like, oh, no. Wow. They actually went there. Right. Because like if this was Top Gun Maverick that came out in like 1989, we'd all go into it and be like, I mean, he's not going to die. Yeah. You know, it's like James Bond, which I know. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> on. yeah, but it's like, yeah, they actually had that. It was that tense where you're like, oh, my God, like anybody up here could die. Yeah, dude. And awesome. I, that's what makes a great movie. Totally. Love it. I can't wait to watch it again. So, so what, what what do we got for our next topic? Here? Next thing. What were the unexpected gems? What movies did you see and you did not think that they were going to go there, but they did? Um, Let's see. I think the number three, we kind of talked about this and it's, we talked about it like two weeks ago and it's uh, a Christmas story Christmas. Oh, okay. 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 I did not think that movie would end up being anywhere. I think the way I described it to people who asked me how it was, I was like, it was way better than I thought it had any business being like, I thought it worked on many levels. I will definitely add it to my list of Christmas movies. I watch every year and it just, I thought it worked. And so, you know, obviously you guys know I love Christmas and love Christmas movies. So I've had two of them on my list already. <laughs> and yeah, I really liked it. So uh, number two for me, and this is awesome. If you get a chance to see it, I totally recommend it, is Pinocchio. The Guillermo, Disney one? No. Guillermo del Toro. Oh, the one that just like came out like two weeks ago. Yeah. The animation is off the charts. It's a okay. different take on Pinocchio. I absolutely like it more than the Disney live action one, which really honestly was just like, they just like remade the animated one. And I'm not even going to lie. Like parts of it, I was like, Pinocchio as animated in the live action, he looks like identical. It looks like they they're doing like Roger Rabbit. No, they just threw Tom Hanks in. Yeah, you know, it was I don't know. This movie, yeah, I totally recommend it. And whoever did the animation, uh two thumbs up from Demon Man because it was so cool. I I just really appreciated it. I thought it was visually stunning and it totally looks, you know, he always has these kind of like crazy worlds. I think he did like what was it, Pan's Labyrinth or uh I don't know, a couple different movies, but you know, it has that type of vibe, right? Yeah. So I would check it out. Totally recommend it. I thought that was unexpected because I would have assumed when the year started that it would have been the Disney one that I would love. <laughs> I would have thought so too. I mean, but okay. And number one, uh, CP, you're going to have to uh, bear with me on this. And I think you will appreciate this, but I have to give number one to a short film called Help Wanted. An unexpected no. gem from 2022. One Never of our good of friends, Connor Geary, filmed a short film and submitted it to the Collaboration Film Festival. And he actually won an award. So congratulations, man. And it was a lot of fun to see your film. I'm, I don't know, as your friend, I'm just really proud of you. And I thought it was great. So <laughs> How about what that? did you think? Um, no comment. No, I'm joking. I mean, I mean, it was cool that he made the movie. Maybe we'll post a link to it. Um, you kind of like missed the question because it was like, what were the unexpected gems talking about, you know, widely released films? But hey, I'm glad that you care more about your friends than you do about your audience. So that's fine. Ooh, it was an unexpected gem. Well done, Connor. <laughs> All right, fine. Um, just for that reason, I will add an honorable mention to my list. So okay. the people know what the unexpected gems are. So the first one I'm going to go with, I don't know if you saw this or not, The Northman. No, and I Robert didn't see it, although I thought Tigers, it looked... Yeah, it really had Anna Taylor Joy, Alexander Skarsgård, like a Viking movie with a yeah, it looked badass uh, twist to it. I mean, if you've seen any other Robert Eggers films, like he's a really talented filmmaker. So I expected it to be good. 
but I don't think I expected it to be as, as good as it was when I saw it. Cause I was like, wow, this is just, you know, it was, he does this really cool. He walks this very interesting line between real versus mythology. And I think that it's really fun when filmmakers can get that and do it successfully. And he does That's it in cool. the film. And I mean, obviously Skarsgård makes an awesome Viking. I know as an actor, he said for a long time, he wanted to be a part of a Viking film and it doesn't disappoint. It's got an amazing That's cast awesome. an interesting film. So if Vikings are your jam, you should totally check it out. Dope. I mean, I'll probably actually watch it now. Is it streaming anywhere? Do you know? Um, I don't know. I'll find out. Yeah, because I haven't I it. haven't seen I only saw it in the theaters. I haven't seen it since. So um so number three on my list is actually the film Cyrano. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh uh Peter Dinklage. Peter Peter Dinklage, yeah. Yeah, and um obviously I love the book. I was curious to see how this ad- adaptation was going to hold up. This apparently was actually not a, a, uh, adapted from the book. This movie was adapted from the stage play, oh, okay. which had been adapted from the book. And it has to do with, uh, instead of Cyrano is having a big nose, it's Cyrano is, is a short guy. And that's where the discrimination and everything comes from. And I thought it was actually a really may, uh, well-made movie. I will warn you, it is a musical technically. So... Um, if you're not cool with musicals, you probably won't appreciate it. But I went into it and I thought it was really enjoyable. And I thought it was a, a really well-made film. And I mean, you have, again, an incredible actor. Like, yeah, it's a it's kind of a comedic part based based off of one of my favorite books. So I really enjoyed that one. Nice. Um, number two. Uh, this was actually streaming only on Amazon Prime. And it's 13 Lives. It's the movie directed by Ron Howard about mm. the uh, the attempts to rescue the hikers that were stranded in the cave when the flooding happened in Thailand. Oh, OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, blown away. Really well made movie. I didn't know how you could make a movie like that and and just have so much so much story Drama. and emotion and everything. And I was totally captivated seeing it. And as I said, uh threw it on because I was scrolling through prime one day and I was like, well, I got nothing else to do and ended up really, really liking it. But again, I mean, right. Ron Howard, I guess, doesn't disappoint. Yeah. He usually does good stuff. And number one, I have talked about this movie multiple times on this podcast. I am going to go with black Adam. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, I knew that was cool. I did not think it would be a good film. I did not like the trailer for it. I went to see it in the theater, very reluctant, just knowing that I had to because it was a DC film. It had the rock and I walked out of it totally enjoying it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's weird because that that's another movie kind of like uh, Thor Love and Thunder, where there's some sort of disconnect between like the critics and the fans. I feel like a lot of the fans, a lot of the people who went to the movie left and were they were like, hey, it was it was good. Like, I liked it. Oh, yeah. Again, the the critics trashed it, but audiences seem like they've liked it. Yeah. It was, it was a little, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Well, black Adam, I know is actually streaming on, I believe it's HBO max now. So that's, I'm that's on my list to watch just, now that all the, just I've literally just watched Christmas movies for like an entire month. <laughs> so yeah, I'll have to, uh, I got to go see Avatar. Uh, there's a lot. I'm very excited, but yeah. I have a get chance to, to get it. something that doesn't involve holiday movies. Yeah. And like I said, I did watch a couple new holiday movies this year and was pleasantly surprised. They were really good. I enjoyed a couple of them, but yeah, I really have just been watching the same movies that I watch every year. <laughs> <laughs> guess that's not a surprise. All right. So what did you find were the biggest disappointments? What movies did not deliver for you? So I really, I'm just going to go with an overall topic on this one, not a list. And I'm just going to go with Marvel. Ooh. So the reasoning for that is I think uh, the Infinity Saga reached such highs on what the MCU can be and kind of really a culmination of 10 years worth of storytelling. So it's only inevitable that I feel like we are going to come down to earth a little bit after, you know, the extravaganza that was Endgame. And I do have to give a tip of the cap. I loved 
Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, I know that came out at the end of last year, but of Phase 4, that was my favorite movie. But a lot of the movies that did come out this year, Doctor Strange, Thor, um, to me, they they just were a little bit of a, a letdown. Um, I, I, th- I think they were good. Like I said, I enjoyed them. I don't know if they'd make my top 10 Marvel MCU films list, right? Yeah. Uh, I went and saw them all in the theaters. I was obviously very excited for them. So, it, like, they were good. I just, I, I felt like Marvel, yeah, we, we came back down a little bit. Phase four was a little jumbled, didn't have maybe the best kind of direction on where they're going. Or at, at the very least, uh, obviously, there wasn't a roadmap and it's not complete. So maybe once it, we see it all, we'll be like, man, you can't miss phase four. It was awesome. But right now, yeah. I think we just had to come back down to earth a little bit. What do you think? I mean, were you, were any of the Marvel films you thought great this year? Uh, no, I was disappointed with most of them. Actually, a Marvel film tops my list as the most disappointing movie. But I think the difference is there wasn't one that's, you know, almost every year there's a Marvel film that you can point to as one of the, you know, was the top, awesome. the cinematic, you know, you have to see it, you know, like yeah. last year, I think, you know, we definitely would have talked about Spider-Man, you know, and that as probably would have been my know. top. That might've been my top movie of the year last year. Right. And you're Spider-Man. like, you had to see it. It was great. Everybody loved it. It smashed in the box office. And it seems like all the ones that have come out this year have been underwhelming. And I think that that's the thing. They just, you don't walk out of it feeling like, you know, you got your money's worth with a Marvel movie that rocked your world. Yeah. And I love Marvel, so I'll still be going to see more. It's not a problem per se. It's just I also think that, you know, when you look at the the culmination of Endgame and they were able to kind of close all these story threads and end some of the stories for some of the characters and, and different things. I think it was just inevitable that, you know, hey, we're not going to get to the end game highs again for a little while. And maybe that's a good thing, you know, so we appreciate it when it returns. Hopefully it's epic. And I do do have to say another letdown was just that there were no Star Wars movies in theaters. (laughs) Uh, I just, I love Star Wars. I I mean, I wish they would just uh, release, re-release the originals. I would have (laughs) gone. You would have. Oh, man, if they re-release Star Wars in IMAX, oh, my God, I'll be there. I I would love it. I hope it happens. (laughs) So, all right, what about you? What do you think? What was the the letdown for you this year? Um, So, honorable mention for letdowns was the movie The Menu. I don't know if you've heard about it or seen the trailer. I haven't heard about it, no. Um, Ralph Phineas is the chef at this exclusive island restaurant. And the trailer made it seem like it could be potentially interesting. And I just felt like they kind like, of... Why am uh, I watching? <laughs> what'd you say? You're like, why am I watching this? Like, well, halfway through the story, they kind of um, suck all the mystery out of it. And you kind of know where it's going. And I just... I felt very underwhelmed, considering that I had been reading reviews and I had heard from some word of mouth that it was supposed to be, you know, just really... I heard people telling me that they thought it was like mind blowing and amazing and it did not deliver in any way at that level. So I was like, eh, wasn't what I was expecting. Yeah. For sure. uh, number three on my list, the new scream movie. Oh, um, okay. I, you know, we've talked about scream you and I, I, I think the first one is brilliant and I've totally one of my favorite all time scary movies. Um, I think the second is actually an amazing sequel. And I think you can make the case on some ways it's better than the first. Um, this was in no way at the same league. And part of it probably is the complete absence of Wes. Um, yeah. His I'm absence sure was hurt. felt and it was just okay. And weirdly, all the movie does, it seems like is really knock uh, Disney Star Wars, which, you know, if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. And I'd love to know your analysis of it. But I felt like everything was a dig at, at Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I don't know it. It's always hard with sequels. I know the thing is like with horror movies, that entire genre just gets like a pass. Like you can make as many sequels 
to an original great movie and everybody will show up in the hopes that one of those sequels will knock it out of the park. You know, every horror franchise has like 10 sequels or 10 remakes yep. or whatever. The hell. So who yeah. knows? Maybe we'll get another scream and it will actually be amazing. But yeah, I mean, the original is just so hard to beat. Yeah. Um, number two to me was Jurassic Park Dominion. Okay. You know, I, when I heard that Malcolm and Grant were both coming back, I was so excited. Fair enough. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think I, I think I even texted you about this after I walked out. I remember turning to my brother in the movie and I was like, dude, there's supposed to be dinosaurs in the dinosaur movie. Right. Cause <laughs> I was like, I felt so cheap. About that, like, I'm like, if you're going to put me in a Jurassic park movie and the main villain is going to be prehistoric locust, I'm like, we have a serious problem. Well, I think my issue with that movie. So first of all, I don't think, any of the Jurassic Park sequels have ever reached the heights with effects that Steven Spielberg and yeah. ILM did in original Jurassic Park. Absolutely. It literally does not look as good as the movie from 1993. It's insane. insane. Yes. Yeah, like what they accomplished is absolutely incredible. And it's why that became the biggest movie of all time. And it's why it's as revered today as it is. But what bothered me about that movie was that, I thought the trailers promised they they kind of set up a premise where dinosaurs were going to like invade the world, right? Yeah, and man, so, man and dinosaurs living together. Yeah, but like you know, obviously we got a, a little taste of that when the T Rex went to San Diego and Lost World. But yeah, they were going to have dinosaurs like in the real world, and like at maybe the a third of the way through the movie, they end up back on an island at another park. Yeah, yeah, I was like, we have seen this movie. Yeah. <laughs> twice now and yeah. i don't so you killed the premise and now we're just kind of recycling through all the old hits that aren't being done anywhere near as well yeah <sighs> so i agree with you on that pick yeah i think it was a bit of a letdown but honestly if you want to see a dinosaur movie done right it's like just rewatch Jurassic watch the Park. original and and yeah. that's the worst part i think when you you walk out of, the, of this one and you're like you know i just should have stayed home and thrown on the original Jurassic park it, it Delivers better. Same thing, um, honestly. CP, I guarantee you, if at the same movie theater they had original Jurassic Park or Jurassic Park Dominion that I haven't seen, I would have gone and saw the original yeah, on me the too. big screen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I would have been like, oh, well, then that's an easy choice. Number one for me was Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, kind of in the same vein you pointed out about Marvel. Um, was disappointed. It, I didn't really like Sam Raimi's kind of horror style that he brought to the Marvel universe. Don't think it worked. Thought the, you know, the whole, um, essentially we took Wanda and made her full on villain in this one, which I didn't think worked, especially after there's this whole series of WandaVision that explores kind of her character. And then uh, I just didn't think it would, it gave her, her the justice that she deserved thought the over-reliance of magic as the, the crux of the plot was kind of a weak point. Yeah. And again, for this, uh, like the better version of Dr. Strange multiverse of madness was the Spider-Man movie. We saw it did yeah. the whole, you know, multiverse, uh, you know, multiple versions much better than the movie that was supposed to do it. So yeah, I think, you know, that that was one of the things that really struck me with that movie was, you know, multiverse of madness. And for the most part, like the multiverse itself really doesn't get explored all that much. Now, I know it's a two hour film and that is a lot to ask out of that movie, but it seems like that was what they set out to do. So ambitious, sure. But did it really deliver on that? You know, it's kind of like in Thor with Gore the God Butcher, like I said earlier, it was like uh, maybe it would have been great to see him butcher some more gods. You know, it would have been <laughs> yeah. cool to... Yeah. In Multiverse of Madness, they had like one kind of scene where they're like falling through the different multiverses and I thought that was that was really cool. Yeah. I actually liked that scene. I was like, oh, that's neat. Like one time they like turn into liquid. One, they're like, yeah. you know, like a painting. Another one, things are all backwards. Like, yeah endless possibilities but i feel like basically what the movie does is they 
they basically accept that like that one scene should fulfill that need. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I don't think it does because almost everywhere else they go, they look the same or yeah. like you gotta, like if you're talking multiverse of madness, yeah, I want to see them as like watercolors or I want to see people be able to do absolutely insane things. And it just felt like, you know, a lot of the times they went to like a new multiverse, but it felt a lot like our world. So yeah. I was like, I don't that was, yeah, I, 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 I agree. I think that was a little bit disappointing. Still enjoyed it. I, it's not a movie that I like, I wouldn't watch again. I would, but yeah, I just think they, they were ambitious with the goal of multiverse. And I don't know if it quite came across. No, for sure. So what movies from 2022 did you not yet get a chance to see, but you still totally intend to. So number one is avatar, the way of water. But because I've already said that on this episode, I'm going to list three other movies. Okay. So, but that is the next movie I will see in the theaters. And that is the number one movie from 2022 that I haven't seen that I want to see. So, Number three is going to be Turning Red by Pixar. Mm. And honestly, I just really enjoy Pixar movies. And I'll give any of them a shot. And you'll see that as maybe a theme the longer I'm on this show, that there are just certain things I'm like, yep, I'm in. And, you know, like a Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah. Like, yep. I don't care what it's about. You actually wouldn't even have to show me a trailer. I'd go. <laughs> yeah. Like, with no, that actually might be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tarantino came out with the movie and you just go see it without any knowledge of like what it is. I'm like, oh, that would have been sick. <laughs> but yeah, and I just think they do such beautiful animation and their their storytelling techniques are so powerful and emotional that I just, I love what Pixar does and, and how creative they are. So that's one I would love to check out. Number two is actually, I want to dance with somebody about Whitney Houston. So I love that song. Uh, I loved her as an artist and I still listen to her music all the time. And just like, um, what was the Queen movie? Bohemian Rhapsody, Rocket Man. I like all those movies, those kind of biopic. Bioptic. Did you ever see Elvis that came out this summer? No, but I mean, I'm going to watch that too. Okay. Yeah, that's on my list. I love those. Like, they're, they're just fun for me. Like, okay. you know, you have these iconic people that really lived. And obviously, I know there's exaggeration here, and this isn't necessarily how, necessarily how it actually happened. But I just love seeing their stories. And obviously, it's filled with great music and music that I love. So okay. I want to see that. And then number, number one that's not Avatar is actually The Fablemans. So this mm. movie... I see for multiple reasons so going back to pixar uh generally speaking if spielberg makes a movie i'm open to watching it you're there he's so talented so many of his movies actually make my all-time lists i mean jurassic park saving private i mean you don't kind of name his greatest hits but we've talked about raiders jaws like there's so many yeah. he's so good at what he does but more than that i'm actually fascinated because it's a movie about movies and also a little bit of his like semi autobiographical kind of coming of age, right? Yeah. He, he is actually yeah. kind of the main character in this movie. And it's kind of explaining to us. And if you're a Spielberg fan and I love his work, where does that come from? No, everyone I know who's seen it has said it's really incredible. It's kind of a shame because the theatrical window that it came out in seems so short. Yeah, just kind of around the holidays, obviously Black Panther and a couple other, you know, blockbusters were dropped around the same time. And it 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 really is disappointing to me that it did not stick around the theaters very long because I totally want to see it, too. Yeah. So that's number one for me. Uh, and I will. Uh, I, that's a movie that is one, though, that I'm like, do I want to go to the theater? Like, or do I just want to wait for it on streaming? Which I mean, if isn't it's still in the theater, I'll go see it. I haven't seen it in any theaters in a while. I know. I tried to find it on, I think it was like Thanksgiving. I don't know if it was out yet because I wanted to go to the movies after Thanksgiving dinner. And I don't think it was in theaters yet. And I was like, damn, that I would have loved to have gone. So right. what about you? Uh, what movies from 2022 
do you still want to see? Oh man, we have some some very close overlap there. Um, so I obviously want to see Avatar. Um, that uh, I'm not going to do that because I assume you'll I'll probably see it this week and we'll probably end up talking about it next week. So the first one I'm going to mention is the whale. Okay, and that's only because I mean Darren Afrosky is in an incredible director and everything that I've heard about Brendan Fraser's performance is apparently it's just amazing. So I definitely wanted to check that out. Um, second one I wanted to see is the horror film barbarian. I did not see anything about it. Everything that I have received is word of mouth that it's pretty incredible. And um, I'd like to give it a shot. And then number one, I'm also with you. Uh, I want to dance with somebody, the Whitney Houston movie, because I don't know why, but it actually looks really good. Yeah, I, I don't know. I hope it. I hope it's good because I do enjoy those biopics. So, yeah, that'd be sweet. All right. The last thing I gotta ask you is movies that you are looking forward to that are going to be coming out in 2023. All right. Well, I think we're going to have a little overlap and we'll see. But I think. My number three, I know how much you love the original and we'll have to talk about it once it comes out because I'm going to go see it in the theaters as recommended by you. <laughs> Movies in 2023, number three is Dune Part 2. Oh, dude. I already marked it down on my calendar. Whatever's coming out that day, I'm going to see it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a true theater experience. It was one that I really enjoyed. I thought it was a film worthy of the big screen and I'm looking forward to catching the second half of that. So I think that'll be really incredible. Number two, we're back to Marvel. I am really excited to see Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, which I believe kicks off phase five of the MCU. It is the true introduction of the new big bad, Kang, even though I think the, the guy in the Loki series is the same actor, Jonathan Majors, but it's not, it's like a variant, I think is what they call it. Yeah, in the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Obviously, I love Marvel, and I went and saw I think almost every movie that they released in theaters this year. Like you said, Black Panther, Thor. Um, what was the other one? I even watched the Guardians Holiday Special, but that was at home. Uh, Doctor or uh, Doctor yeah, Doctor Strange. Strange. Yeah, I was at all of them. So I'll continue to be there. I love Marvel, and but here we go, man. This is the movie I'm looking forward to the most, and. It, I don't even know exactly what it's about, but here's that theme again. Oppenheimer by Christopher oh. Nolan. And again, if it's Christopher Nolan, I love that guy's work. He has made some truly incredible films. My favorite comic book movie of all time. I think Interstellar is just wild. What a great ride. And all the imagination of uh, Inception. I. I really, I think he's just so talented with big budget films that I cannot wait and I would love to go. All right. I mean. God, yeah. his his work. I mean, the prestige, even though, what was the war movie he just did? Dunkirk? Was awesome. It was really good. I mean, it's Christopher Nolan. It's hard to find a bad Nolan film. Honestly, the worst film yeah. he may have made might be The Tenant. Yeah, Tenant might. That was the only one. It was like so ambitious that I was like, uh, I don't know. It's if like it's he out Nolan's himself. Yeah, a little bit. I was like, oh man, like I think there's so much in here that if it maybe it was just kind of reassembled a little bit, it could have been incredible, but it was a little maybe it was just too ambitious. But yeah. God, Christopher Nolan being ambitious, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, that's good. Um no, that's actually some yeah, dude. I think Oppenheimer really looks interesting. You said it, it's it's Nolan, right? I can't I mean, wait. The original trailer for Oppenheimer that, that came out like a couple weeks ago where it's like totally like it tells you nothing. You know, it's about yeah. Oppenheimer based on the title. You know, it's right. about the bomb. Nothing and else to like it. a clicking uh, ticking like a, clock. Right? Yeah, the clock uh, ticking down. And I'm just like, yep, I'm, I'm in. You gave me nothing in that trailer, but I'm sold. Yeah, Good don't job, give me any more. I don't want to know. I just <laughs> yeah. want to see the movie. Just want to go for the ride. Um, so number three for me is the Flash movie. Oh, yeah, that's right. God, dude. I don't know what the hell is wrong 
with Warner Brothers and DC, but um, God, uh, this is literally the example of everything not to do if you own a major studio. <laughs> and I'm just curious to see if they get it right. Again, uh, this movie has been in production hell for a while. Uh, the rumors circulate from everything. So, I mean, for all we know, it could be a complete dumpster fire or it could be one of the most amazing, ambitious comic book films of all time. And at this point, I have no idea which way is it going because once a month, DC releases a bunch of crap. And then the month later, they release a whole bunch of other stuff and contradict everything that they ever said. So, Who knows? James Gunn might not even release it. He might not, dude. And you know, the worst part is I was most excited about it was that all the uh, Michael Keaton stuff. Yes. Yeah. Keaton Batman coming back for it. You saw that that in the trailer, right? Yeah. yeah. Insane. Yeah. No, I, mean, I, I really, I thought, obviously, I think most comic book fans are familiar with Flashpoint and just the concept of kind of not necessarily like the multiverse, the way we see it in Marvel, but here was this perfect film with the opportunity to like reset the board, but in in story in world you know we've gotten it with days of future past obviously marvel it's not any one movie but it's happening right now where after you know kang comes and you have all these different multiverses Time like stuff, you yeah. can reset the deck however you want you can have yep. a new iron man if you want right yeah so yeah I, I don't know i was i thought this was their chance to kind of okay here we can reset it and kind of go forward. And instead it just sounds like they're scrapping it all, which is, we talked about it, but. <laughs> well, yeah. And I was actually really impressed because it, when they first um, were talking about this flash movie, there was talk that it was even going to tie all the way back to the Christopher Reeves Superman movie from the seventies as part of the canon of the awesome. shared cinematic universe. And I was like, that's pretty ambitious if they can pull it off where everything that's DC's ever made is, is part of one cohesive universe. I'm like, incredible idea. Um, we now know that's n it, it doesn't have that extent. In fact, it seems like they're actively um, pushing more and more properties and films from this, this oh. uh, film, but yeah. So, I, so I'm just curious to see what happens. Number two for me in the same vein, uh, Shazam two fury of the gods. Um, I love okay. the first film. I know you really love the first one. Yeah, dude. It's a movie about a kid who gets superpowers. Like that was most of my childhood. <laughs> um, I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, again, kind of disappointment because the way things were going, um, I thought we were going to see a lot of really interesting things from the Black Adam kind of Shazam Superman side of the world, you know. I think we're all yeah. looking forward to this ultimate showdown between the three of them, which is now not going to happen, of course. But I'm still excited. Unbelievable, to dude. Unbelievable. Yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, I know, man. Like, like literally on this podcast, I'm getting more actively depressed as I talk to you about movies. No, and like the the everybody that participated is still open to it. In fact, <laughs> they want it. So yeah. it's like, why? Yeah. And actually, ironically enough, the the film I'm most excited about already mentioned. Uh, Dune Part 2, but also a Warner Brothers Discovery film. So apparently all the movies I want to see are from the exact same dumpster fire <laughs> of a of a studio, Warner Brothers. But <laughs> they got your happens. attention. And I mean, again, like, like, again, Dune Part 2. And we talked about this on the Dune episode. Why the heck are you going to make a movie called Dune, spend close to $200 million making it? Oh, I'm sorry. Make a movie called Dune Part 1. Spend close to $200 million making it and then say, you know what? We're not sure if we're going to make the second half. It really depends on how it does in the box office. I'm like, you know what? You guys just need to start committing and following through to some vision so you don't waste billions and millions of dollars um, because apparently no one knows yeah. what the hell they're doing over there. But Well, plus, I mean, there's also kind of the just the mental trick of like, if you aren't committed to part two, what does that say about part one? <laughs> right. Like, well, I don't know how much I want to see part one if you're not even going to finish it. But dude, I'm just so excited about part part two. I love part one. Um, just, you know, so unbelievably blown away with that. Cannot wait to see how the, the film ends because the first one is nothing short of incredible in my mind. 
Awesome. Well, I'm going to read through a few other movies that are coming out, and you let me know if you're in. So there's Cocaine Bear. Yes. The Cocaine Bear. I can't believe that's actually going. Cocaine Bear is going to be. Uh, what's his name? It's his last movie. Ray Liotta. <laughs> yeah, Ray Liotta. I'm like, uh, he ended his amazing career on Cocaine Bear. Uh, might be amazing. Who knows? Might be like the new Snakes on a Plane. Maybe, yeah. So we got we got Magic Mike's Last Dance is coming out. Oh, there's Creed. not going to see it. Creed 3. I don't know if you're in for that. I don't think I even saw Creed 2. The first one was really good. I, I really like Creed. Yeah. There is a movie called 65 starring Keanu Reeves. And I'm assuming it's the, it looks like it's the director of a quiet place. So it's going to be a sci-fi thriller and they're going to foreign planets and stuff. So, I mean, it's actually, Keanu, I like, I it's not Keanu. It's Adam driver. Oh, well then I Sorry. might not see it. I guess we'll see. No, it's Adam driver, not Keanu Reeves. Okay. So no, I'm still in. Sounds cool. I'll have to uh, see Christian CP. Mm-hmm. Here is uh, they're making a Scream Six. It's happening. <laughs> I mean, the sad thing is, I I just I said how it was one of the most disappointing movies, but you know I'll go see it. Yeah. Okay. And then obviously we all knew this was coming out. This was the movie I actually I saw this on the list, and that's why I said Keanu. But it's actually John Wick Four, Chapter Four. Oh, I mean, he's gonna shoot a bunch of people, and it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> now this is a movie are you interested in this at all dungeons and dragons oh i actually i i know i don't know anything about dungeon and dragons but i did see that trailer and think it looked entertaining it looks like like fun yeah it yeah. doesn't look like like they're in no way trying to make like lord of the rings no no i mean the there's good jokes in it you know the way they set up chris pine's character i will definitely see it i think it looks like it will be a good time Here's another one we've talked about, and I'm curious if you're going to go see it, but the Super Mario Brothers movie. Mm. I mean, of I'll course go. I'm going to go see it. Of course I'm going to go. I, I don't have high hopes. Are you excited for the new Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3? I know you're a huge James Gunn oh. and Guardians fan. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will not see that movie. All right. Anyway. Uh, here's one you probably will see. Uh, Fast 10. Dude, of course. Of course I'm going to go it- see that. Yeah, it does look like most of the cast is returning. So that's pretty cool. Now, this is one that was controversial with its trailer, but these movies have just absolutely killed the box office. So I'm curious to see how it does. But The Little Mermaid, the live action remake by Disney. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, I'll probably wait till it comes out on Disney Plus. I've actually not seen any of the live action Disney movies in the theater. Yeah, I don't usually see them. I like honestly the versions I have seen. I we've talked about this. I like the animated version better. Yeah. Pinocchio being the latest one where I saw it and I was like, I, like it's not that I don't care for it. It's just it's like they literally just kind of remade. There's the a better version movie. of something out there. Yeah, like, I was like, you already rather... did it, and it's amazing. Yeah. So like, I, I just kind of just want to watch that one. Here's one that I think we both might want to see, but uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider Verse. That's the sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, right? Yes. The yeah. that cool animation style, which I thought looked great. No, that came was across. a great movie. Yeah, and I then the I thought the story one. was really fun. It was well done. There was a cool uh, theme running through it. And they had some cool variations on, you know, Spider-Man's kind of yeah. origin. Yeah. Miles Morales was great. I love that character. Yeah, I love Spider-Man Noir. Transformers Rise of the Beasts. I mean, we've already said it. I'm going to see it. I know you're not sold on it. I mean, you know, I honestly, the animation in the the special effects in the trailer just kind of threw me. I hope they're a little bit more complete because it, 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 I'm getting the vibe that Transformers is just going more kind of cartoony. Yeah. Rather than like, oh, hey, we want to make these look like they could actually transform. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that's cool. We talked about this one Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I mean, gonna see it. Not thrilled that that trailer has not convinced me. But if it's Harrison Ford's last ride is Indiana Jones, I mean, you have to have to go. Yeah, I'll be there. But yeah, I too, you know, it's weird. He's like eighty, and I mean, if you know any eighty-year-olds, there's just no way. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't do cool stuff. No, it's not even that. Like, 
just whatever Indy's going to have to do physically, like most 80 year olds, like stairs. No, that's what I mean. They like use walkers and take yeah. an hour to get up the stairs. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, it's a bit of a stretch these days. I'm like, we'll yeah. see. But I mean, I will say that the kind of the deep fake technology of them, you know, uh, making him younger. What do they call that? Oh, de-aging. Yeah, de-aging. They, well, they did it in The Irishman, but only to varying success. I don't know how well that will actually age. But it looks pretty good. And kind of like Transformers, maybe that's not even the final version that we'll get, but it looks pretty legit. I'd almost prefer that they just make another indie movie like that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I don't we'll know. See. We'll see. There's a new Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning. Oh, appeared- dude, I forgot. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, hopefully, I know uh, Tom Cruise is back. You know, he, I mean, I don't know how old he is, but he's still doing it. <laughs> the insane thing is, like, I don't know what they've been able to do with that franchise, but almost every Mission Impossible movie gets better. Yeah, they, they do a good job. It's weird, you know, how far back when you go watch, like, the original Mission Impossible. Yeah. You're like, this looks nothing like the ones we get now. But yeah. hey, that's cool though. You know, it, it does. It always kind of had a little bit of that James Bond vibe, where it's like, hey, this this can morph into many different things. I don't know. You ever watched Mission Impossible Two again? <laughs> John I did. Wood? I still think it's probably the worst Mission Impossible movie. But man, um, especially the second trilogy, four, five, and six, it's it's unbelievable how good those movies are. Pretty sweet. I mean, it revived the franchise basically. Mm -hmm. uh there's marvels the marvels (laughs) that's the second the sequel to captain marvel yep and apparently it's going to have uh uh what's her name is it comic con i don't remember how you say her name but uh from miss marvel on disney plus the series Mm -hmm. and then i believe it will also have uh the character from wandavision will be a part of it so I don't know. They're going to bring some characters together that All maybe right. uh, haven't been on screen. So, and Samuel L. Jackson is back as Nick Fury. So I mean, that's okay. Come on, always, a, always a plus. Yeah, there's Barbie, as I mentioned to you. Which, like I said, if you, there's a trailer out there that was actually pretty cool, I just thought it was a creative way to do a trailer. Yeah, but um, there's a few other movies coming out that you know uh, I don't know if they'll actually get pushed because we're getting closer to. Uh, the end of the year sometimes they don't actually make it on time but there's the hunger games there's a new uh it's called uh wonka it's a new willy wonka movie um there's actually it says december 20th there's supposed to be a new ghostbusters afterlife sequel but again i don't know if that'll make it it doesn't even sound like it's in production (laughs) yeah i haven't heard anything about it so that'll be weird Oh, and here's the one that I bet you're just super pumped for, and that's Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. You know, it it actually blows my mind. The Aquaman movie, I think, is the highest grossing DC superhero film ever. I think it made something (laughs) like $1.3 billion, and I don't know how, because it's so middle of the road. From I mean, I saw it in the theater, but it was totally like, middle of the road in every way i don't know how it crushed in the i mean i guess it's just jason momo as a salesman i don't know what maybe i mean you know a movie that to me was like that it was just kind of mid was uh wonder woman i know wonder woman got uh, like oh, a lot of i praise. loved wonder woman <laughs> yeah no i know like people really loved wonder woman and like i watched it and after it was over i was kind of like eh. i didn't i don't know it was whatever i I do think, you know, it it was one of those movies where everybody was kind of like, you know, girl power, like, let's go. And I don't even know if it'll age that well, like how many people rewatch that movie. And then to my understanding, which I never watched it, 1984 is trash. Um, 1980. I was I would considering I love the first Wonder Woman movie. I also love the 80s. I was like, how could this movie in any way fail? And yeah, it just does not. Not deliver. It's just weak, weak writing, bad villains. Um, oh, that's not good for comics. No. <laughs> well, they can always steal Marvel's formula. But yeah, the 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 Aquaman thing I think is weird. 
And again, it's the same thing. Why are fans going to go out and see an Aquaman movie when you pretty much told us that Aquaman is is no more and that this is not part of, you know, going That's forward in, in 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 D.C.? So it, it's kind of a, a bad move in, in my mind. All, All right. right. Well, CP, ending 2022, it seems like you are still pissed about the DCEU and James Gunn. So oh, absolutely. I guess you'll have to carry that over into 2023 because there were uh, quite a few movies from DC that are going to hit theaters. A couple. I think it was like two or three. Mm -hmm. And who knows? Maybe you'll end up really liking them. Maybe I will. Well, on that note, CP, that does it for our episode this week. I want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in. We appreciate you guys listening to the show and hope you really enjoyed it. This was kind of a cool episode. episode i think when i do the actual i'll i'll put our lists in the episode release description so that uh listeners viewers you can actually send us your list because i'm curious especially for 2022 i mean i know there's a lot of movies that i didn't see so i'm curious what other people really loved from this year's slate of films you know i think there was what there was one movie everybody told me to see it was called like everywhere all at once or something oh yeah every uh, everything everywhere all at once it's actually really awesome dude if you get a chance you should check it out yeah, that's on my list. Like, I wanted to see that, and I just haven't seen it yet. But uh, I'm sure there's more out there. So I'm I'm actually turning to our listeners here and saying, like, hey, if you got any recommendations for movies that came out, Christmas is over, and D-Man's reloading. Uh, well, really, it's streaming now. I was going to say the DVD player, but that's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but I hope everybody had a great year. We hope uh, you guys all have a happy new year. And... Be sure to uh, continue the conversations. Send us any of your comments, feedback, or lists. And you can find all of our social media and all of our stuff at filmmakerscompass.com, where we also have all of our full episodes. All right, CP, I'm going to send it over to you. All right. Well, thank you for hanging out and talking movies with us. We will see you back here next week and next year. Until then... (laughs) Keep watching movies, and we'll see you then.